Hello, this is Tony and welcome back to Borderline HR. The topic for today's video is Dialectic Behavioral Therapy or DBT for short. Dialectical behavior therapy is an evidence-based psychotherapy that began with efforts to treat patients with borderline personality disorder. There is evidence that DBT can be useful in treating mood disorders, suicidal ideation, and for change in behavioral patterns such as substance use or self-harm. It is based on a biosocial model of development, cognitive behavioral treatment strategies, and specific therapeutic dialectical intervention methods. Individual therapy and skills training in groups complement each other to form an overall concept whose superiority over non-specific forms of therapy has been empirically demonstrated. DBT focuses on the concept of mindfulness or paying attention to the present emotion. DBT teaches skills to control intense emotions, reduce self-destructive behavior, manage distress, and improve relationships. It seeks a balance between accepting and changing behaviors. This proactive problem-solving approach was developed specifically to treat borderline personality disorder. DBT turns into a process in which the therapist and client work with acceptance and change-oriented strategies and ultimately balance and synthesize them in a manner comparable to the philosophical dialectical process of hypothesis and antithesis followed by synthesis. This approach was developed by Dr. Marsha Linnen, a psychology researcher at the University of Washington to help people increase their emotional and cognitive regulation by learning about the triggers that lead to reactive states and helping to assess which coping skill to apply in the sequence of events, thoughts, feelings and behaviors to help avoid undesired reactions. In individual therapy, problem areas are ordered hierarchically in terms of urgency. Suicidal and parasuicidal behaviors are ranked first followed by therapy-threatening behaviors, quality of life impairments, and improvement of skills. Problem areas are addressed in this order. If necessary, they are immediately regressed to a higher level. The individual therapist tries to find a balance between validation and change strategies. Patients keep a diary card in which medication use, tension states, drug use, and dysfunctional behaviors are to be recorded. Behavioral assessments are designed to provide insight into tension buildup and teach individuals to incorporate what they learn in skills training into action plans. After self-injury or suicidal behavior, patients are asked to make such analyses themselves. A prerequisite for eventual trauma processing in the second therapy stage is that patients have learned to self-regulate emotional crises, states of tension and dissociation through the skills that they have learned. Trauma processing is accomplished through techniques from cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure strategies. Skills training is the clay from which the individual therapist and patient can model a character. What is meant is that the skills learned are incorporated into behavioral analyses and action plans developed in the individual therapy session and combined into a meaningful whole. The emphasis is on teaching skills. Interactional problems are solved DBT style by applying them. Criticism and suggestions from patients are heavily encouraged and an experimental partnership atmosphere is intended. The skills training itself consists of four modules, inner mindfulness, dealing with feelings, stress tolerance and interpersonal skills. In the inner mindfulness module, patients learn the skills of noticing, participating, describing, thinking, and acting in a non-judgmental but focused and effective way. Here you can easily detect the Zen influences. The goal is to achieve awareness in everyday life and gain more control over oneself. Participation and distance, feeling and understanding are to be brought into harmony with each other. Here the basic skills orientation to a goal orientation to self-esteem, and orientation to relationship are taught. Factors that interfere with social skills and those that promote them are identified. Supportive self-statements are developed. 
The goal is for patients to be able to insist on their own desires, goals and opinions while being respected by others, as well as maintaining their own self-esteem. Here it is taught that feelings, even those that we find unpleasant, have a function and meaning. Skills such as observing, describing and understanding feelings, reducing vulnerability, taking steps toward pleasant feelings, letting go of emotional suffering, and acting in opposition to the feeling are discussed and practiced. The goal is to learn to understand feelings in their meanings and effects. Confidence in one's own emotional world is to be increased. Patients learn here to endure crises and reduce tension through techniques such as distracting oneself with strong sensory stimuli, enhancing the moment through various techniques, pros and cons, like which arguments are in favor of, for example, self-harm and which aren't, accepting reality, breathing exercises, and mindfulness exercises. Another goal is to learn to endure feelings or events when the situation can't be changed. You will be guided to set up an individual emergency kit that contains important paraphernalia for stress tolerance skills. For a bit more about stress tolerance skills, just check out the video I've made about them. I will link it somewhere here. Patients may call their therapists in suicidal crises or before they self-harm. Telephone availability must be cleared with the therapist in advance and is also based on the therapist's limitations. Patients report why they are in crises and which skills they've already used. Both discuss skills that the patient may now use. It is helpful for this if patients can name skills that they have learned. DBT is the most studied treatment for borderline personality disorder and also the most effective one. Previous research shows that DBT is superior to standard therapies in terms of number and duration of hospitalizations, number of parasuicidal acts, decrease in anger and expansion of social and occupational integration. So, I've been in DBT for about four years now, and I've started it in one of the worst phases of my life. DBT is the reason why I will forever stand Dr. Marsha Linen. <sighs> and it's the first therapy out of the six I've tried so far that actually helped me and yielded results. It's the first therapy where I feel valued and respected by my therapist, safe and seen as a whole, the first one where I leave appointments feeling better than I did before, and the first one I'm actually looking forward to. I always believed that it was normal that you just feel worse after every single appointment and DBT has just proven me wrong. It's an experience of working together instead of being worked on. That's why I wholeheartedly can tell every single person with DPD to try it out for themselves. Thank you for watching. Do you have any questions you'd like me to answer or borderline related topics you'd want me to cover or experiences you'd like to share? The comment section is yours. Please also don't forget to save the like and subscribe button from their respective feelings of abandonment and see you next time. Be kind to one another.